born in Richmond, Virginia, and <clears throat> my father was a salesman for a company called Union Envelope back in Richmond, Virginia. And then they quickly saw him that he had a lot of charisma and talent. And so they made, they had him and a mechanic travel to Grand Prairie, Texas, and they opened up Union Envelope back in the day. Mm -hmm. And so um, he did a startup with a company called Union Envelope in Grand Prairie. And um, we moved from Richmond, Virginia. We moved into Grand Prairie temporarily for a couple weeks, and then we moved into Arlington. So I grew up in Arlington, Texas. And, <clears throat> and it was a great upbringing. Dad was always busy with Union Envelope. And then he kind of saw a different niche in the marketplace, and it was short run, higher quality, um, stand on your head type customer service. And so he went to his best client at the time, who was Carl Rove, and he said, Carl, you Not know. the Carl Rove. Yeah, Carl Rove. Really? Yeah, so Carl and my father were very close. I did not know. Yeah, and so Carl said, well, sure, Paul, I'll give you all my business. And Dad said, great. And so he started up a company called Texas Envelope with two other investors. And he quickly made that very successful. And he went to buy them out. And they said, no, we're going to buy you out. And you do a 12-month non-compete. So my father sold commercial printing for 12 months out of, out of the house. And then 12 months later, he started up Gelser Industries. And so as a kid growing up, I actually worked at Texas Envelope. And, and originally, I... As soon as I was 15, <clears throat> I had a job working for, you know, a fast food restaurant. And the reason I did it was because I could get me a hardship license and I could drive, <laughs> right? And so after about two months or maybe three months of flipping burgers, my father said, all right, I, I, you know, I need you to come over to work and let's get busy. And I said, all right. And he said, first, you're in charge of all the trash. And I said, okay, that's fine. So then I was in charge of making all the corrugated boxes, putting them together, and then I was in charge of all the recycling. And then quickly, um, that was at the time when Ronald Reagan was running for president. Well, we were making all of Reagan's envelopes. And so a lot of the mailings would go out of Austin and go out of Houston. And so uh, at the time, my father had a uh, station wagon that I'd load up with, you know, 100,000 envelopes. And I'd either drive them to Austin or I'd drive them to Houston. And, uh, and it was... How old are you now? I was... I was 15, I think, at the time. So I was making deliveries into Houston when I was 15 and 16. And and it was a lot of fun. Yeah. You know, it was really enjoyable. I, I liked it as a kid. I mean, my father had an extreme work ethic, um, you know, to the nth degree. And so, you know, typically during the school school years, he'd have me work about a 30-hour week. And I was a good student and I always made A's. It, it, you know, and I had to work for him. And then I played a lot of baseball and I always had, you know, a lot of good friends around me. And so, and then the summer months would come around and dad's like, all right, I need you full time. <laughs> I'm like, well, what's that mean? And he's like, you just need to come in with me and stay until I leave, basically. And I said, okay. So that was, you know, you get there at six or seven in the morning and you'd come home maybe around 10 o'clock at night. And so, and I learned how to run machines. And I learned how to, you know, do a lot of different things. I learned a lot of skills back in the eighties. And so I graduated high school in 85 and, um, you know, that, that, that was a lot of fun. I played a lot of baseball, learned how to play golf. And like I said, you know, I was a good student, but I had to work at, at it, you know, I mean. And so uh, it was that work ethic. And so, um, you know, when I went off to school, I uh, went to Baylor University, and it was, it was fabulous. And it was wild being there. And as busy as you are going from uh, a public education back in the 80s to a university, just how I much. Wanted that. Yeah, and how much more work and how much more effort it took was amazing. Yeah. But yet, and I pledged a fraternity, but yet I had so much time on my hands because I was used to, you know, waking up and going to bed and all in the time in the middle being extremely uh, efficient and busy. And so, um, you know, college was a lot of fun and I did well in school and um, finance major and entrepreneurship major and, and uh, made a great group of friends, fraternity and was vice president and president of my fraternity. And, you know, it was a real successful career. And um, <clears throat> in some of those summers, uh, I worked for investment houses. I worked for uh, Bear Stearns one summer, and then another summer I worked for uh, uh, Shears Lehman Brothers. And that was out in California. And, um, and so I really thought I wanted to get in the banking world, and, and I really wanted to get in the venture capital world. And um, so I worked really hard trying to get a venture capital internship, and I really worked super hard to get a venture capital interviews. 
And so I, I worked hard to co really connect with over 300 of them. And, and I got zero offers. <laughs> and so, so I had a great guy. His name was Cecil who interviewed me, and it was NCMB at the time. And uh, Cecil believed in me, got me a bunch of interviews uh, inside that bank. And, uh, you know, it was a lot of fun. So he, he, he gave me a job offer, but I had to be in Houston. And, and, and I didn't take that job. And so Cecil called me one day on a Friday afternoon. He said, Paul, why aren't you taking that job? I said, sir, I really don't want to be in Houston. And Cecil was, um, he had a lot of emotion in him and very driven, great guy. And, uh, and he said, all right, what do you want? I said, I want to be in Dallas. He said, all right, I'm not going to do you any favors, but I'll get you a handful of interviews in Dallas. And if you don't come out absolutely on top, I'm not going to hire you again. I said, sir, that's totally fine. I said, that's great. I said, I look forward to meeting the crew in Dallas. And, and, uh, and all that went well. And so I got a job. And, and uh, you know, I graduated and started working in the bank within a week or two. You know, Cecil was had a lot of energy. And so he ended up being my boss's 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 boss. And, yeah, and so Cecil was a great man. And, um, and so working at Nations Bank... I was a credit analyst in a group of about 50 young people, and uh, and you do a lot of rotations throughout the bank. It might be the real estate branch, or it might be the corporate uh, commercial accounts, or the more mid-level, or the private banking, or even um, syndication-type loans. And all those were a lot of fun. And so I did that for about two years, and, and the amount of knowledge that I got was unbelievable because the amount of work that they expected analysts to do um, – was extremely analytical and you had to do a lot of research and you really had to understand the subject because when you would present to the committees or present to the different groups of people that were trying to figure out whether to do a loan or not or how to how to structure something, you know, you're pitching to guys that are, you know, 60 years old. And if you're not on task and knowing what you're doing, they'll, they'll quickly just throw you out of the room. And I didn't want that. So I, I did. I worked hard at it and did a really good job with it and had a lot of fun doing the Nations Bank stuff. And so then one day my father, you know, called me at work. He said, "Hey," he said, um, let, "Let's let's meet up for dinner and um, let's talk about something." I'm, you know, I, the company is tiny, but I think I've got something special. And I said, "Sure, let's have dinner." So I met him at a restaurant there in Arlington, um, and and uh, you know, we just sat down. And he's like, "Hey, here's what I've got. Um, we're little." But he said, I, I, I really need some help in the office. He said, I'm basically a one-man show. And, and he had another young lady who was about my age or a year older working for him. Uh, and, and previous to that, my sister worked with him for uh, two, two or three years. And then this other young lady came in, and she was a dynamo, but I think she um, wanted to get married and go do some other things. And so, so Dad saw that hey, here's an opportunity for you to come in and help me and let's see what we can do. Let's make this thing, let's, 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 let's make this special. And I said, <clears throat> let's do it. You know, why not? Let's go why, for it. Why, why, 